let's have a look at writing sentences as equations with parentheses and then solving. So take this example, take a number, add 3, then multiply the sum by 2, the result is 14. Okay, let's first of all see what would happen if we knew the number. So it says right there, take a number, that's unknown, okay. But let's say the number was 10. Take a number, add 3, add 3, then multiply the sum by 2. At this point, wouldn't you say the sum is 13? So 10, so that's the sum, 13. Multiply that by 2, 2 times that, and we get 26. Then it says the result is 14. So obviously the number isn't 10. That doesn't work. Should have given 14, okay? You can probably figure it out in your head. The question is, how do we write it down with an X and parentheses in there, which is what we're here to learn. Now, another way to do this is to do this. 2 times 10 plus 3. It's multiply the sum by 2. And be careful, because this is wrong. If you just went 2 times 10, that's 20 plus 3. That gives 23, not 26, right? If you want to multiply 2 by the sum of 10 and 3, you've got to put parentheses around the 10 plus 3 so that you're calculating 13 first with parentheses, order of operations, PEMDAS, remember that? Parentheses come first, so you're going to put 10 and 3 together, make 13, then multiply by 2. So you need parentheses around this. Even the distributive properly works. 20 plus 2 times 3, 6, 26. So let's go. Take a number, add 3, then multiply the sum by 2, result is 14. Here's a number, x. Take a number, add 3. Multiply this sum by 2. You need to put parentheses around the sum, and then multiply by 2. What is incorrect is to do this, x plus 3, and then just go 2 times x. It should be 2 times x plus 3 in parentheses, the whole thing, 2 times the entire sum. Because this would just be 2x plus 3, whereas this one will be 2x plus 6. Okay? The result is 14, so this is 14. And watch when you apply the distributive property, you get 2x plus 6 equals 14. Right? Not 2x plus 3. So you need parentheses. Okay? And then solve the equation, subtract 6 from both sides. 2x is... Um, 8 divided by 2, and it looks like x is 4. And you probably guessed that already. 4 plus 3 makes 7. 2 times that, 2 times 7, 14. Right? Let's have a look at this example. Take a number, subtract 6, then multiply the difference by 3. The result is 15. Take a number, here we go, x, there's a number, subtract 6, subtract 6, multiply the difference by 3. This difference is the whole thing. The common mistake is to just write down 3 times x minus 6, most people do that. What you've got to do is take the entire thing, the difference the entire thing, and multiply all of that by 3. And the result is 15, okay? So that's, we've got the parentheses around the difference, and the difference is x minus 6, so multiply the 3 in, and we should get 3x minus 18 equals 15. Add 18 to both sides, and 3x equals 33. Divide by 3 on both sides, and we should have x is 11. And you should know how to do this by now. And again, you know, press pause if you want to try and do all these questions on your own, and then check the answer. And full screen is over here. Make sure you use full screen. Okay, so if we check the answer, we're going to take a number, 11, subtract 6. So we're checking if 11 works. Subtract 6. What does that give us? 5, right? Multiply the difference by 3. Multiply 3 times that difference, 3 times 5, we get 50. So, obviously, we should have put parentheses around 11 minus 6, 
Now, 3 times that, you know, would be 3 times 5, 15. What would be incorrect is just go 3 times 11 minus 6 without parentheses, because that would be 33 minus 6, which would give us 27. Okay? So this would not give us the 15. So that's obviously incorrect. So you do need parentheses around the 11 minus 6, or the x minus 6. So press pause and see if you can do this one by yourself. And full screen is here. Half the difference between a number and 4 gives 3. Now remember that says half the difference, half the difference between a number and 4. First, let's write down what would this mean? What would this be? The difference between a number and 4. Just do that. Forget about this part. Write down the difference between a number and 4. And again, you know, if you've been doing your homework, this is going to be easy because we've already seen it before, right? Or if you've struggled at it before, then the next time you see it, it should come a little bit easier. The difference between a number and 4, a number we usually represent by a variable like the letter X or you could use A or N or P or Q anything but usually use X difference between number and 4 X minus 4 okay now how do we write this half the difference between a number and 4 well this is the difference put the difference in parentheses now get half of it half the difference between number and 4 gives 3 and then we solve that okay and we've learned the best way to solve these is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the denominator. Or the, <laughs> the reciprocal of the fraction. By the, den the denominator is 2. Multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 2. Or 2 over 1, right? So 2 over 1 times 1 over 2 gives 2 over 2, or 1. So you have 1 times that, or just x minus 4, equals 3 times 2 is 6. Add 4 to both sides and we have x is 10. So let's check that. Half the difference between a number and 4 gives 3. The difference between a number and 4, 10 minus 4, we're checking to see if 10 works, is 6. Half of that, half of 6, of course, is 1 half times 6 over 1, which is 6 over 2, and that's 3. And that works. Okay.